What's going on, people? Welcome back to AFTV. We are standing outside the Emirates Stadium to preview tomorrow's big game against Porto. 8 p.m. kickoff in the second leg of the Champions League. Look, Porto took first blood. The Dragons took first blood against us back at their place. But it's time for the Gunners to get revenge. They won the battle, but I'm sure we'll win the war. And before we get into the preview, let's hear a word from our sponsors. This video is partnered with Aura. Digital protection for everything that matters. It's a VPN, antivirus, password management, and parental control, all in one place. You can get them all together at one affordable price. I've been using Aura because it shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submit an opt-out request for them. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Cleaning up my information not only helps me to reduce the amount of spam I get, but also protects me from hackers who are trying to access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura is always on, doing the hard work of keeping me safe so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can go to aura.com slash AFTV to start your free two-week trial or click the link in the video description below. Big up Aura. Um, let's get straight into this. I've got the team with me. The question I want to start with is, is it unacceptable for Arsenal to go out at this stage of the Champions League? Yeah. Let's start with that. Well, that's positive stuff. <laughs> yes. well, you, you're accepting of it, have you? I, I, I'm asking the question. <laughs> is it unacceptable for Arsenal to go is. out? It is. Absolutely, 100%. All agree with that. It's as also well? unacceptable to go out to Porto, in my opinion, because we could be facing Real Madrid in the in the last sixteen. We could be facing, you know, Bayern Munich, and if we went out to one of those sides, then it'd be understandable to say the least in our first season back. Even though you know we've got high aspirations in this competition, but it's Porto, and no disrespect to them, you know where Arsenal are going and the the, the performance and levels we've shown over the last eighteen months now. We should be getting past them. We're mm. flying colours. Obviously, we're not doing this one with flying colours because. They got the 1-0 win in the first leg. But yeah, we need to go through unacceptable otherwise. Yeah, James, just on that, the 1-0 win that we see that, that Porto got when we had no shots on target, a freak result or just Porto were better than us that? Are you not worried them coming here Tuesday that it could kind of stifle Arsenal as well? Yeah, it's a bit of both. Arteta's had problems with cup ties, two-legged affairs and all that. I know we had a mini run in the Europa, but then to go out to... Well, that was the only time, actually. We went out to Olympiacos, he went out last season to Lisbon. So the one time we did, and then Villarreal beat us, and that was, that was a tough one to take. Um, yeah, I mean, no shots on target out there. When I look at the nine games we've had since the Dubai break, actually the winter break, we all call it the Dubai break, um, <laughs> Arsenal have gone out to attack in every game, but it felt the Porto was the one where we did just have a little bit of a foot on the brake. It's the only game we lost since the Dubai break. Is yeah, and I don't know if I'm giving Arsenal too much credit or maybe not giving enough to, to Porto. What I mean by that is maybe we were just outdone on the day. Like maybe it wasn't a case of we weren't sort of going all out and actually we tried to play our football but Porto were too good. It might just be that. For whatever reason, things didn't click that day and obviously we need to put it right. Yeah, Laurie, I have to ask you. I mean, I'm going to go through actually Porto's last five uh, <laughs> fixtures because and their results. They've actually are unbeaten in their last five. Um, obviously beat us 1-0. They drew 1-1 to Gil Vente. They won 2-1 to Santa Clara. They won 5-0 against Benfica. Your brother does not stop reminding everyone they beat Benfica 5-0, which is a, is a good result. Uh, Galino, no, that's a great result. It is. Galino got, Benfica, uh, you know, established good teams. Exactly right? that. They had... I mean, Otto, Otto Mendy got record in that game, but they've also got Di Maria on that side. Um, Galino, who scored against us, scored two in that game. And then Porto Menence, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, won, they beat them 3-0 as Trina, well, where yeah. Galino had, an, again, another really good goal. So, is, are you worried come here on Tuesday? Because a lot of Arsenal fans I speak to, they're like, when they come to the Emirates, it's going to be a different result. Look at the form we're in. But Porto are also in good form as well. I think a lot of the Arsenal fans, um, and there's one amongst us, who... <laughs> We're overconfident in the first game, and I'm sensing a similar thing this time. I mean, okay. I would make us slight favourites, yep. but I'm not with this narrative that we're just going to blow them away. I think it will be a competitive game, um, but I do believe that we will come through. But we have to respect Porto. I think in the first game, um, I sensed a lot of overconfidence amongst the fans. Yep. Do you think uh, Man City and Liverpool fans will go into this game confident or not? Yeah, there's that's confidence. Just, there's yeah, a thin line it. between confidence and overconfidence. But we should, we should we get the, the job done. Then? We, we should we, get the job done. We're the favourites. We, we should get the job done. But what I'm yeah. saying is, right, okay, so for example, at the weekend, there was a lot of people, myself included, thought that we were going to do a number on Brentford. We didn't, did we? Um, and that's just how things can happen. I would say that 
Porto a better team than Brentford. Um, Brentford gave us a good game. They're going to come with similar tactics. Yeah, I and feel. it's going to be, I was going to say, it's going to be similarly tactical type of game. They're going to try and frustrate us the way Brentford did. Um, so I'm expecting a competitive game. I'm expecting us to win. But um, listen, if we do smoke them, then fine. But I'm, I'm saying we need to show the opposition some respect. I, I think this is a psychological battle yeah. for us. And I know that that gets thrown around sometimes, but it really is because we haven't got past the round of 16 since 2010, because we haven't done anything in this competition. I haven't been in it for seven years and now here we are. We're all obviously very excited about it, but however good Porto are and people, I hate when people do the whole, oh, don't disrespect Porto. I'm not saying they don't have quality and they don't have a good manager, they don't have tactics that yeah. might stifle us. They've got all that. but. We've, we've beaten Liverpool here, we've beaten Man City here, we've beaten Man United here, we've beaten big sides under Mikel Arteta. We've shown tactically we can do our thing. And because they've got something to protect, that, it's like I was saying, when we lost, the only slight positive, and you listen, you don't really take positives out of defeat, but that at least there's clarity going into this game. We know what the job is, but that's also clarity for them. So expect Arsenal to attack and expect Porto to try and protect what they've got. So the, the question is, can you break them down? And I think Arsenal can do that. Look at the... Look at the late goals we've scored recently, Rice against Luton. That's a quality cross from Erdogan, a quality header. Again, with White and Havertz late against uh, Brentford. Yep. Whenever we've popped up with big winners, whether it's Bukayo Saka whipping it to the back post you know, for Rice against United, we've actually shown quality in these dying moments. So it's, it's a mental thing. Keep your nerve. And we can score goals here. And I think that as much as Porto will have their thing and do their thing, and they might nick a goal, we might go 1-0 down, and suddenly the job is to get two or three. It's about holding our nerve for us and overcoming the occasion. Not, it's, it's not just Porto in front of us. It's, I think, everything else. If the players overcome that, they'll be fine. Sounds like James doing the so, play the game, not the occasion talk. That's but a, it is that, really. There's also more than, the, uh, more than most the tactical other games nuances involved as well in Europe. The ta say that again? The you said yourself, James, that we've not done that well in Europe. Doesn't. And I think that's something to do with the tactical nuances that you get that's in Europe. Point that you wouldn't necessarily get in the Premier League, which makes it a different game, different competition. Um, and I think, to be honest, we struggled with that in the first leg, man. Mm. We did. Sorry, people, I have to interrupt on Laurie's waffle in there to let you know that we have two massive guests joining us on the watch on for tomorrow's massive game against Porto. Grime legend and my good friend Chip and Gogglebox, I'm a celeb, get me out of here, and the host of the Brits this year, Baba Tunde. So make sure you're there. So you have to be honest and say that. I want to get Turkish's thoughts on that, the tactical side, it's experience that people are going to go to when it comes to this game. Have Arsenal got the experience to get it over the line um, come Tuesday night? I want to get kind of your thoughts on it. it is it experience? Is it tactical nuances? Is it the occasion? Or are you just confident and say, no, nah, Arsenal are on great form. We're going, to, we're going to win regardless. The question is experience. We haven't got the experience right. in the Champions League. Um, Does that worry you? A couple of players have. Um, those couple of players being the ones from Chelsea, Jorginho and Havertz. Right. But overall, if we're talking about experience, we, we don't have that. So, can't lean on that. And I don't think that is a, a d decisive factor in, in, right. in how the, the next 90 minutes should play out. I think the quality should shine through. You know, I, I agree with James. I look at the last leg, the first leg, and mm. I think the occasion must have got to them a bit because it just looked, you know, chalk and cheese in comparison to the rest of the performances in and around that fixture. So, I refuse to believe that Arteta would have gone completely different against Porto than you know he's been going in the league so i do think there was a bit of all right it's champions league you know under the lights and it got to them but they've got to, you know they've got to rewrite mm. the, the the wrongs and, and james is right you know we've shown this season that we can fight until the very end i'm hoping it's not a fight until the very end because yeah um <laughs> i, I want to save those nervy moments for later on in the champions league but um yeah, we can't lean on experience, but we must lean on quality. We've got far more quality than Porto do. Um, we're in a better moment, in my opinion, even though Porto are in great form. Yeah, they are, they, they are. Recently. They are. I think, you know, the emphasis is on, is on us to get the job done now. Obviously, Porto will try to stifle. They will try to protect their league. They have got quality They as might well. get a goal. Because, you know, we've seen at home this season, you know, we're in a good place at the moment. We've seen at home this season. We have been susceptible at time. Well, we was just the other day. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think Ramsdale's going to be starting this one. So I doubt we're going to see anything like that. Um, but that could also be famous last words. We'll see. Um, <laughs> no, so no, well. we've got to keep our heads screwed on because, you know, if we can see any more than one goal, we're out. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's get into the predicted 11 of what we want to go with. Before we go into that, obviously, I want to look at the, the injuries that, that um, Porto have. Now, they have um, Taremi, who... Online, it says that he is injured at an unknown date. However, I've spoken to a few people from Porto and they've said, no, he will be within the squad. It's like he's going to be making a return. Whether he starts or not, I don't know. But that's something to worry about. Um, they've good got... Player. Yeah, exactly. Very good player. They've got Sans... 
Sanusi, I hope I said that right, um, a defender who's out, and then Marcano as well, who's also out of defender. Sanusi was an ACL injury, so he's, yeah, he's they're out both there's two, yeah, both of the uh, centre backs got ACL injuries, so they'll be out for a while. But let's get into our predicts eleven. I mean, you I joke. You're going to do our injuries. Oh, oh, well, we can talk about that within the predicts what, 11. Porto fan TV or what? <laughs> that went through Porto's injuries and said, yeah. We know. All right, so obviously, and their results. Obviously, yeah. In Porto's result, yeah. Porto's injuries. <laughs> and they're big up Porto. Obviously, Timber's out. Um, Martinelli, who I was actually sat not too far away from against Brentford. Listen, there's, you saw online the reports that, you know, he's going to be out for a while. He's on crutches. I actually did see him on crutches. He refused to take photos with anyone um, in the box he was sat in What's against the Brentford. The injury is, well, was a gash. <laughs> I believe it's his foot, but I've heard it's a bruised foot as well. Did you so, see it? Did I? I'm not looking for Martinelli's gash. Um, so yeah, right. So I just know he's injured. Okay, he's injured for a bit. Okay, so he's probably not going to be available. <laughs> you enjoyed that one. Um, no? And and that is it. Oh, Tommy Asu as well. Tommy Asu as well for Arsenal. I believe is is still not going to make it um, to the Arsenal squad. Where is that guy, man? I don't know what is going on. What's he doing? I don't know what's going on. Oh, the guy what? went to Asia Cup or whatever it was and played and then played, come back come and then back, he's doubled his wages and we <laughs> ain't seen him. Fuck <laughs> okay, no. it. But yeah, that's like, congrats on the new contract. Yeah, congrats on the new contract. But that is it for our injuries. It's not Porto Fan TV, but there we go. That is that is the information for us. Let's get into Brits 11. I mean, you joked about Ramsdale making a return potentially for Porto. Obviously, it's probably not going to happen. Ryan, go everyone. We're good with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think sense. it's safe to assume that Ramsdale will be back, yeah. R Sorry, Raya, Raya. It's Raya, the old age, that. Raya, Raya. <laughs> um, let's go to right back. A man who's in tremendous form. A lot of people telling me that he doesn't get enough of, of flowers that he deserves. Turkish, I know you're a big fan of him. Ben White, I'm Top assuming. two right back in the league. <laughs> and the one ahead of him isn't as good as a defender. The one ahead of him is Trent. Yeah, but I, I don't see no one else touching Ben White over the last 18 months. I'm sorry. I know Reese James is quality. He, he's, he's injury prone. I can't say a man that plays five to ten games a season can be better than a man that's been ever present putting in sevens eights every week um he can invert he can overlap he did can he start the season well. quite not he as can, not as good as level he's at now he though. didn't start as as good as he ended or, or was throughout last who season did? but who did that is the question and and you know the, ter the turn of the year has has improved many players forms including him um I'm just glad he's getting his flowers. I don't, you know, a lot of people mention in England and whatnot. I don't care. I don't mm. care if he doesn't get picked for England. I prefer my players not going on international duty because more often than not, English players come back with a dark cloud, media on their back. I'd prefer not to have that, even though they've got a good chance to win it. But Ben White, yeah. Ben White, okay, fair enough. With the back to, uh, pairing for centre back from Saliba and Gabriel, everyone. Makes sense. Now, here's what the discussion where we can kind of have one here is the left back position. I think Kivio's done so well since he's back in. I think he keeps his spot, but Zinchenko did come on against Brentford. He is available for this game. Would anyone make that change? No, you stick with Kivio because it's worked um, and he's playing well. But I do think if we get to half time, nil nil, or a goal down, or in a desperate situation for a goal, I think you get Zinni on quite quickly just in the hope he does something because he can influence the attacking third. I mean, Zinni kind of gets a lot of. Criticism. I, I've been part of this, by the way, for maybe getting too involved in the moment. Yeah. But I do remember when City 2-0 down against Villa on the final day of the season, needing a goal. That was who Pep turned to. And Zinni, listen, City fans will tell you, maybe this is a bit extreme, but somewhat ran the game from left back. No, they say like, it, He they? was big in that 45. And if you get that version of Zinchenko and you really need him, he can change everything. And we saw last season a bit of a game changer for us. Mm. Um, but I stick with Kivio for now. But I think Zinni is, a, is an option we may need in the game later. I'm on. tempted to go the other way and say start Zinni and go for the kill in the oh, first 45 Really? 60. I'm tempted, but I think yours is the more sensible approach. You know, make sure we're not susceptible at the back. But yeah. I also want to get the job done as early as possible. I don't want to be at 60 minutes, nil nil, maybe one nil up or one one or they're one nil up. And, you know, Zinni comes on and we hope that he's, you know, going to change the game. I'd rather us go in with the best attacking lineup we can so I agree with that but bringing Zinni in immediately would that risk send it but also send a bit of a message of desperation a little bit like I think if you stick with the 11 and say boys go do it I think there's a bit more of a like you know it's not a big deal you guys can do this do you know what I mean whereas he brings Zinni in there's a little bit more like I'm stressed we need all our attacking I don't know I don't think so no I, I know enough. I know what you're I know the worry but I don't think so I think I think our form and the way we're winning games left, right and centre around that Porto one. I don't think anyone would, would scream desperation if Zinchenko started. I think it'd, it'd be another 
another tactical, you know, sure. um, mm. uh, move by Interesting. Interesting. I think, yeah, I think a, a lot of us, but you're going to say stick with Kivio, right? Is that yeah, what yeah, you're leaning I mean, towards? Like, I'm happy. I'm happy. Like, Kivio has yeah. been solid and I'm happy with Ben White inverting as well. But I, I also know that, you know, Zinni does, does help move the ball forward. He helps occupy the midfield. He's a good passer. Yeah. Um, whereas Ben White is more of a, a big physical presence body that you can, you know, you, you can play over the top. You can... So it's a bit different. His inverting from the right is a bit different to Zinchenko's, yeah, I, I believe. So. Yeah, okay. I think you stick, stick defensively sound, keep Kibura keep in there. Midfield three, Rice, Jorginho, Odegaard, everyone? Yeah, I stick yep, with I that. I think that makes sense. Yep, that now, this, makes is, sense. this is where the conversation needs to be had. Front three, no Martinelli. Um, we don't know that for sure. We don't, but... It's unlikely. Yeah, I've really, from what I've seen... Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I know it sounds unlikely through everything you hear, but I just get this feeling that they won't play for another two and a half weeks. He'll really want to be available. Look at when he came on against City for the second half when you know Arteta said he did everything to make himself available for that mm. game. I think Marte might just go, if it is a cut on the knee or, or, or sorry, on the ankle or whatever it is, and he might just say, look, just bandage it up, get me, through, get me through 90 minutes. To be fair, someone did say to me, when I was at the Brentford game, they said he wouldn't be here if it was that serious because they wouldn't want to risk him being seen so bad. So he, he might be, he might be available, but um, I think it's unlikely. But it, if we let's just assume, oh, Teta probably, he's probably walking fine. Teta probably gave him crutches yeah, that's the, in front of the cameras, <laughs> just limp a bit. Yeah, like, don't take any when phones. When he limped off, though, he was no, it was I know, but I yeah. just. I, I don't trust a word I'll have to say. No, I get that. I, 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 think, trust me, I get that. Do you remember that. because Saka walked in with the uh, Arsenal team for City? Yeah. He walked in, I was like, oh, yeah, Saka's yeah. here. Yeah, yeah on the, not, not in the squad. So. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I get that. I get that. I remember even seeing Jesus as well doing the walk, thinking he was going to be available, wasn't available as well. But yeah. so I understand that. But let's... He, let's he is a miss though if he's not playing. 100%. Because 100%. Um, his speed and his explosivity is something that we, we could well do with. Jesus must start, man. Okay, let's, I think let's it's do time it. for Jay's, and I think it's it's a good time as well. Listen, I wanted Martinelli for this game because I I love Martinelli, but I look at Jesus. I look at on the left. What, what is he? Yeah, what is he thinking now? You know, he, he's had what his fourth um, reoccurrence of the knee injury. He, he he's now finding himself second in the pecking order for the striker position. Hmm. So this is an opportunity for him to start on the left, do something because I think. Yeah. Jesus isn't Martinelli. They're, they're completely different players, but Trossard isn't Martinelli either. He's also a completely different player. And I, and I prefer Trossard a lot more centrally, whereas Jesus, I think, can adapt and has adapted his game on the wing we saw at Man City. We've seen at us a few times as well. So I think having Jesus on the left and, and Kai Havertz up top, Kai Havertz dropping into midfield, Jesus occupying the, the box or in and around the box, I think that would be the perfect scenario for us. And he is, Jesus is probably our jack in the box in a sense, in our attack. He's the one that he can pull Sutton out of nothing. Mm. He can turn two defenders. He can he can put one into the top corner. He can, has he slowed down the attack when he has, since you've seen him back at times, slowed down Arsenal's We haven't attack. seen enough of him to say okay. that. And and, usually, and I would be hesitant to, to say that because usually he's part of why our attack has been so free-flowing and, and fast-paced. Mm. You know, he's been key to that since coming in. So I think it goes without saying, start. His, no, numbers, I would his, numbers, agree his numbers are crazy. You, you need League. those variations. You do need someone that's going to give you something a bit different. Um, he's very different from Havertz as well, so I think that. Well, that he's, I think Turge is saying way. keep Havertz in the in the in the false nine position, but put Jesus. Yeah, on yeah, the that's left. what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. the variations that that provides. So no Trossard for you then. Well, I mean, listen, Trossard's a quality player. He, he didn't have a very good game at the weekend, but I'm sure if he's called upon, he, he can do his stuff as well. So you know. Yeah, but sometimes we had a really good discussion about this on Forever Arsenal. Go watch it all. Um, Sometimes it's a profile that makes a bigger difference than a player. Mm -hmm. So Arsenal system has had two blitzing wingers. By the way, I agree Jesus should play for me because he's that balance between a bit of the best of what Trossard could do, a bit of the best of what an out and out winger can do. Now the closest to Martinelli is Reese Nelson. So if you're if Arteta sees the key to beating Porto is getting real pace down the wings and you know going at their fullbacks, which by the way we've had a lot of joy with in the Champions League this season. Mm -hmm. Then Nelson's the guy you go for. I remember back at, actually quite liked him, but remember Francis Coquelin, right, when he came into the team? Do you know one of the reasons, apart from he actually did well, I'll give him credit, he did really well. I think one of the reasons as well we really took to him was just he was the profile. We just needed a ball winning midfielder. Yeah. We hadn't had one for so long and he was actually there to do it. And so, in a weird way, there might have been better options in that team. I remember Ramsey got shoved out to the right wing. Now, a lot of people would have argued that at the time, the Ramsey was a better footballer than Coquelin, but sometimes about profile. And I just think that 
there is an argument, a legitimate argument for if Martinez isn't available and you want to do what Arsenal have done best and Reese Nelson's the guy, but I still think Jesus probably gives you just enough to have the best of both worlds. The experience, the quality and the kind of out and out way we play as well. And he's a big champion. Well, he's, 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 numbers he's are a great big in player in the Yeah, he is. His numbers, you know, are numbers are great for us and he's done his thing at Man City as well. He never won it with Man City, but he, he's had great moments for them. Mm, okay. um, so yeah, I think Jay Zuta goes yeah. about saying that his, this is his chance now. Ten games to go in the league. Here's your chance, big game. Help us win it, and give give Arteta something to think about come the thirty first. Okay, before we get into score predictions, I was going to read out some closing stats. It may sway your score prediction. It may not. Arsenal have won all three of their home meetings with Porto in all competitions by an aggregate score of eleven nil. And Most... we never won away. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Most recently five nil at the Emirates. Yeah. So we're very true to form right now. Perfect. And then the next one, uh, Arsenal have been eliminated from nine of their 10 previous Champions League knockout stages ties in which That's they great. lost the, the first leg. However, the one exception did come against Porto in 2009-2010 season um, and we progressed past the round of 16. So, with all that being said, score predictions, let me start from left to right. Laurie, my friend, what are you going to go with? You know, I'm, I'm tempted to say 2-0, but I'm doing so quite nervously because I... Yeah, I don't know, I've just got this feeling that Porto are going to be difficult to overcome. And can we keep them out for 90 minutes plus? Hopefully. I mean, we've got the defence that's capable of doing it. But yeah, I'm going to go 2-0, but I'm nervous. I'm going to admit that. Turkish? 3-1. I'm tempted to say 4-1, but yeah. I'm going to say 3-1 because I think we should just get the job done. Listen, I know people's ner nervy about it. Yeah. And I, and I do think that Porto are capable of giving us a tough game. We saw that in the first leg. But just go do just go do your thing, Arsenal, man. Just go. We're a better side. We've got the better players. We've got the better manager. Yeah. We, we've got less experience, but we should, <laughs> you know, we should just still get it done. James? 1-0 Arsenal and we go through on pens. It's a horrible, horrible, <laughs> nervy... <laughs> That's the Potential last thing I right. bloody want. This is huge for Arteta because he had three second leg games. Olympiacos, yep. Villarreal, Sporting. Sporting. Yep. And love the guy. We've all given him immense credit the last few months and over the last few years, but he failed in every single one of those, yep. to be honest. You probably forgive him Olympiacos because he was very new to it. But he's really fallen short. This can't happen again, man. Mm -hmm. it, like, we have to, in a position of you got a second leg at home to get it done, we can't fall for a fourth time. So it's big. It's why I think it will be nervy. You add that with the whole last 16. We haven't got past them since 2010, all that. So I, I see it being a nervy night for Arsenal, but hopefully a triumphant one. Yeah, I'm going with 2-0. Um, same as Laurie, but yeah, a tight one. They're just last minute. We've been, we score one nil and then a last minute uh, winner to make it 2-0 and go through. Who's That's what I'm it? hoping for. What's who's getting it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? No, yeah, probably, probably. It doesn't probably. really matter, really. Yeah, as as... Kai Havertz. I think Jesus get the first, Kai Havertz get the, the winner. Let's, let's just go with that. All right, well, that's it for our score predictions. Let us know your score predictions in the comments below. And Gooners, enjoy this international break, sitting top of the league. I'm sure you will. Like the video if you like the video, and we'll see you again very soon. Take care.